Like many musicians, I've been spending much of my lockdown time on overdubbed home recordings. Now recording can be stressful at the best of times, but one of the particular challenges of this track by track method is that there's less pressure to compromise. Unlike live studio recording, one can record endless takes of one's own part, trying to reach perfection. Well, I say endless. I knew it was time to call it quits on one tune when I heard a neighbour singing the melody to himself. But what has surprised me is that it's the simple things that have proved the most challenging. Playing a melody, holding a long note just the right amount of time, improvising a solo without overplaying. So it's humbling to then put on some of my favourite old jazz records and hear musicians both um, sung and unsung, nailing this simple stuff in an era when recording didn't really allow for error. In music, simple doesn't always mean easy. I'm a huge fan of rhythm banjo and what it brings to a band. For years I pointed to Dave Wilborn's playing with McKinney's Cotton Pickers as a shining example, and especially their recording of I Found a New Baby. Check it out. Dave Wilborn is also the vocalist on this number, and as he finishes the vocal, he takes a few bars to return to his position and begin playing again. Listen to the way the rhythm section lifts as he joins in, knitting everything together. I found a new baby, I just had to fall. I found a new baby, she's a new kind of baby, that's all. It's deceptively hard to play this style of banjo, or indeed guitar. I could learn to strum a minor chord in under five minutes, but I might spend the rest of my life failing to create this four to the bar buoyancy. What about halving that? Two beat bass is another difficult craft. It's easy to play the notes, but making it bounce takes special skill. Just listen to Joe Tato on the obscure Carson Robinson Orchestra's recording of Nothing. There are plenty of standout records where slap bass players take center stage with solos, breaks and multiple slapping techniques, but that's one where the bass sets the whole feel while playing very simply. Early jazz drummers were often forced to play simply when making records as engineers alleged that anything loud or complex would cause the needle to jump in the wax. Baby Dodds confines his activities to choke cymbal while backing Louis Armstrong on Willie the Weeper but just listen to the sound he gets. Bandleader Clarence Williams made a successful career in the 1920s, despite having neither the technical nor compositional abilities of many of his contemporaries. His piano playing is rarely impressive, but he's at his best when he does very little. Listen to his simple 4-4 comping in the mid-register on Cushionfoot Stomp. <laughs> Thank you. 
While there's nothing difficult about what Williams plays here, it's pretty tricky asking an accomplished pianist to do it in this day and age. In fact, few rhythm section musicians are prepared to selflessly do so little, and these old infectious grooves can be difficult to achieve as a result. Effective simplicity isn't just about the rhythm section, though. Clarinetist Johnny Dodds often played fiendishly complex ensemble lines, but one of his solos stands out to me for its beautiful simplicity, and that's his solo on Canal Street Blues with King Oliver. Anytime I play Canal Street Blues, I always play Johnny's solo, and it's always tempting to fill in those gaps, but if I do, the solo loses its coherence. Edward Kid Ory based his entire style around simple ensemble lines and rhythmically infectious solos. Take his solo on Too Bad with King Oliver's subsequent band. He plays the melody of the tune, but his phrasing, muted tone, and above all, his rhythmic balance provide it with creative spark. Like Kidori on the previous example, Early jazz trumpet players often played simply in their melody statements during ensembles, but one simple trumpet solo I've always enjoyed is the one played by Leonard Davis with Eddie Condon on That's a Serious Thing. While Davis was a strong player technically, he doesn't engage in pyrotechnics like Ajabo Smith or Roy Eldridge. Listen to his jagged yet logical phrasing here. Early jazz is often misunderstood. I spent a good deal of my time pointing out the complexity present in the composing, arranging and playing of Morton, Nichols, Ellington and the like. But at the moment I'm asking myself whether we can't celebrate simplicity too where we find it. One thing's for sure, simple certainly isn't easy. At the shack burn down. 